Hello, everybody. Kia ora te whano. Kua Ashley Aho. I'd like to share with you my personal journey, my gifts, and my vision for this fellowship. But first, I'd like you to sit back, relax, and come on this journey with me back in time, 1994, Chicago, Illinois. As an energetic four-year-old, I loved books, and I couldn't get enough of them. I was always eager to get to the library and get a new one, go on a new adventure. It was this year that my dad had got me the book, Daddy, Please Get the Moon for Me. And that instantly became my favorite, my go-to classic. And it was the first time that I began to dream, just like Emmeline, Eric, Rich, and a few of other us in the room, what space could look like and what our future adventures could look like and dreaming of all the different adventures I could possibly have. So I'm going to fast forward, though, 10 years. The year is 2004, the year my mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, a terrible neurodegenerative disease that affects the brain and spinal cord. And to this day, there is no cure. I remember being so angry and so confused. Why wasn't there a cure? And why was this happening to somebody that I loved and cared so much about? And at the same time, this was the year that I had to go from 14 to 40 overnight and become the third parent in my family, caring for my three younger siblings. It was this year that I also made it my personal mission to become a doctor, to increase the quality of human life. It was also this year that I understood the true power of Fano. So, after completing my bachelor's degree in neuroscience and human biology, I began a master's degree in biotech at Harvard with the hope and ambition to become the best doctor I possibly could. But quickly I felt this fire in me that I could do so much more. I felt like this hamster on a wheel that I was not achieving my true potential. So I decided to sneak into a lecture, what I was not supposed to attend. <laughs> <laughs> It was at the School of Public Health. But this lecture was on climate change and human health. I walked out of that lecture a completely transformed person. Everything clicked. Our water systems, our food systems, our energy systems, it's all connected and it connects back to us and our human health. It was at that moment I understood that I could fulfill my mission for human health and I, could, and I could figure out, if, if I could figure out how to achieve a sustainable energy future. I knew I needed to make a change. And so I spoke with my mentor. My mentor told me, if you want to make a change and change a system, you need to change the policy. Which, by the way, I had zero experience in. I'm as geeky, nerdy, scientist, technologist as they come. So I had absolutely no clue what to do next. And what he suggested is I get outside my US bubble, outside my Boston bubble, and understand true global decision making from a fresh set of eyes and a new perspective. So to the shock of many friends and family, and maybe this is a criteria for success as there is a few other fellows in the room, dropped out of Harvard uh, and uh, found myself on a plane to Geneva, Switzerland, uh, thanks to the amazing connections of my mentor and had the opportunity to create the first joint center on climate change and human health for the World Health Organization and World Meteorological Organization. From there, I went on to create the first sustainability-oriented innovation index for airports, and soon was beginning to consult for the Swiss government, various companies, and the UN on how to bring together technological innovation for social systems and how we can create sustainable, healthy, and equitable cities that ultimately bring together human health. It's here I came across blockchain and realized the potential it could bring to the future of energy. And since then have had the amazing opportunity to serve on the boards of two, now three space companies, and two blockchain companies where I've been able to share my insights, my experience, and my research on how we can get through this and accelerate the sustainable energy transition. But my connection to EHF runs so much deeper, as I had the amazing opportunity to spend this summer installing sol solar microgrids 
in the remote villages of the Himalayas. The morning I departed on this expedition, I had an email in my inbox with the subject line, EHF Fellowship. I'd been accepted to the first cohort, and my first reaction was, oh my god, this is amazing! And about 30 seconds later, holy shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I was terrified as hell and uh, extremely intimidated by all of you and the weight that this fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> and the weight that this fellowship and the name and this country bring to this honor. So I called my dad in fear. <laughs> And so in my self-doubt, uh, and after calling my dad, my dad told me, Ashley, your mother and I showed you the moon. You must now learn to navigate the stars. So what is my vision for this fellowship? In addition to building upon my PhD research at Stanford on blockchain applications for distributed energy systems and my passion for new space technologies, I want to navigate the stars of possibility with all of you. Just as I was there for my family, I'm here for all of you, my global Fano, offering my ideas, my energy, and my systems thinking perspective on how we can accelerate a sustainable energy future and increase the quality of life by creating sustain a sustainable connected planet starting here in New Zealand. Kokwe, ko. Ko kokwe. Tenekato, tenekato, tenekato. Katoa. Kia ora.